Well, perhaps we'd better talk about some of the terms so that we will yeah. be sure exactly what we mean. Uh, what is operant conditioning? Now, rewards and punishments are what the layman thinks of. You get an organism doing something, and if you then make a reinforcer contingent upon what he's doing, he'll tend to do it again. And the reinforcers you use in the laboratory are the simple ones, like food for a hungry organism or water for a thirsty one. But in daily life, all kinds of things are, are reinforcing. And a, a positive reinforcer strengthens when you present it contingent upon behavior. One of the practical applications of laboratory work in the field of behavior theory is the teaching machine or programmed instruction. Before we can condition or shape or teach any behavior, we must specify the final performance. The behavior of answering questions such as these is the behavior the program is designed to shape. Programmed instruction introduces into the classroom some of the controls of the laboratory. The requirement of a differential response, such as writing the answer, or even saying the answer to yourself, reduces the likelihood of incompatible behavior, such as daydreaming or doodling or looking out the window. One principle of behavior theory is that reinforcement must be delivered immediately. This, of course, is impossible in the conventional classroom situation. But here the student makes his response and then has only to advance the program to learn at once whether or not his response was correct. Fortunately, being right constitutes a reinforcer for most students. As a program progresses, the material appears to be increasingly more difficult to someone who has not worked through the preliminary frames. But for the student who has worked through the whole program, the requisite behavior will be easily available. Now, one of our major teaching techniques here is a token economy with the students. And a token economy, very simply, is a structured learning situation. Uh, tokens are little plastic chips, and our students earn their tokens in a wide variety of ways. Uh, one thing that's common to these different ways to earn tokens is that it always involves learning more appropriate behavior, better ways of handling situations. So a child may earn tokens uh, for getting up on time, for cleaning up his room area, going to school, producing in school, participating in therapy sessions. Now the tokens in turn are taken and traded in for a wide variety of possible rewards. The tokens are our method of tying together appropriate behavior and the reinforcers we have to offer. Can I address this clue stuff? Okay. Includes things like home visits, town trips, living accommodations, meals. Nine, ten, and you're paying me three for breakfast. How does this differ from the more traditional approaches that have been tried with teenagers, or, or with anybody for that matter? And, and the major difference is this focus upon teaching new, more appropriate behaviors. Yeah, a second difference, I think, is in terms of how the staff reacts to the youngsters. In a more traditional kind of approach, uh, the emphasis might be on loving and understanding the youngsters, regardless of their behavior. In a behavioral approach, we want people who are warm, who are accepting, who can praise, but we want them to reserve this warmth and feeling for appropriate behavior and ignore or not pay attention to the inappropriate behavior. 